we call Actors Row. You see Karen right here, you see Tony right here. This is where all of our series regulars reside. Okay, and this is my spot. Well, listen, I didn't tidy up, but I'm pretty tidy anyway, so come on in. This is where I get glammed up. When I'm running my lines, I, I like to be in the zone. I'm a kind of a quiet learner. In season eight, Andy's not a fake boss anymore. She is learning what real leadership looks like. She's removing her victimhood, her victim mentality. She's learning from her friends. She's picking up some characteristics from Danny. She's picking up some characteristics from Fatima. She's picking up some characteristics from Sabrina and Karen because she's no longer just about herself because Andy was the one who had it all together until we watched her fall apart. So her friends are helping her rebuild and in doing that, they're infusing their energy with hers. And it's really incredible to watch her stand up. Oh, okay. That's caught me in the middle of a coffee break in a little Afro jazz. Hi, BET. Welcome to BET Cribs. I'm just kidding. We are at the lot right now, Tyler Perry Studios, and we are shooting season eight of the show. That's right, eight seasons, many seasons of pregnancy. I'm sure you guys are wondering why my dress is so, is it frumpy? Like, does it not fit? What's going on here? No, that's not what it is. The belly's not on right now, but I'm gonna take you to see the belly since y'all wanna talk about it so much. We're going to wardrobe, let's go, come on. Right, y'all. Look, I know it says County Traffic Court Room 100. That's not what this is. This is Paradise. This is my favorite room this season. And this is our wardrobe head, Duran. Costume designer. Costume designer. Yes. Well, you are the head, though. For all You're of in charge. These clothes. I am in charge. Look at all this, guys. Yes. And he's yes. the mastermind yes. behind, behind all the looks that we yes. have, yes. including a lot of Karen's iconic looks. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this season, season eight, and what is the idea? I know, by the way. <laughs> this okay. is for y'all. So uh, this season, I wanted to emphasize a little bit color. We wanted to make things a little bit more free, a little bit more loose. I feel like in the previous seasons, it's been so much contrast happening with you and Zach and all the above. And Aaron. Yeah, yeah, that finally come to a space a little bit more happiness. So outside mm -hmm. the salon where we see her in black, we see her in color, a little bit more vibrant, easy, free. And she's eight months pregnant. It's positive. Of course. Oh, this is the heaviest belly I've worked with. And we yeah. have a lot of pregnancies on a lot of our shows. Me so too. yeah, yeah, this is the most realistic. I think this doesn't look, it, it's made of silicone and it doesn't look as pristine as it did. It, when we saw it seven. in the hospital. Yeah, yes. yeah. So makeup actually does paint yeah. it and they try to color match it to our actual skin. And then there was flesh that blended up under the bra so it appeared real. Mm -hmm. Although. I think it actually, yeah. the color match was really good, yeah. I thought. All right. All right, let's take a look at your twins. So we're done with this tour on my end, and I think there's someone that I want to see real quick. You guys want to come with me? All right, let's go. Duran, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give me a hug. I know you want to. Oh! Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing splendid. Smells good in here. Thank you. You know I keep the essential oils going. He literally does, y'all. Look at the oil going right now. This is a man of purpose. Okay. And I'm gonna let you guys have your little tour or do whatever. Make me look good, okay? Always. I okay. mean, I mean, it's done. It's so done. Not, not it too is. much for me to add. But, it is. Know. Good, good, good. Just, just don't say nothing. I wouldn't say. Bye. So in season eight, my character starts to have a, I'll say, a more dedicated, prominent role in Karen's life. And I'm not gonna give too much away because you gotta watch it. Uh, but I would say things start to turn a corner for him and he's already made it clear you know from season seven that he's very much dedicated and all in um, plus getting involved in uh, you know the business when Pam approached him with the investment idea uh, he starts to just get more involved in, in certain facets uh, of Karen's life hold on hold on, hold on, hold on my man My brother. You see what I go through? You see what I 
He acts Why? like he had odds, but he knows. He knows it's a treat to witness. I love this, this guy. This guy right here. This guy. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing anyway? Why are you bringing this camera to my room? What's up, BT? <laughs> you guys get to see Zach struggle a little bit with his transition from being a street guy, an entrepreneur. At this point, Gary still has his money. So he has a lot of time on his hands as he waits and, and tries to find out what happened to Gary. And he has to be supportive because Fatima's in school and she's working. She's the only one going to a nine to five right now. So she's, he's like a stay at home dad. He's dealing with everything that goes on with Michael. Michael's in therapy, speech therapies in school. So we get to see Zach be a father and how he struggles with always having autonomy over his time to now being stuck in the crib. So we, we get to watch Zach struggle in that transition, but also be supportive to Fatima. So I love that for Zach. So I take this long walk every day, walk by the offices, say what's up to the ladies, they check me out. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Now we here, we here. Zach's look has evolved since season one. Remember season one? He ain't had no beard. You know what I'm saying? Zach wasn't the zaddy. He ain't had no money neither. Zach was broke. He had the same uniform he wore all 25 episodes. Remember that? He had the cargo pants with the white shirt because he was always at work. Yeah, but now you see Zach, he be laced up. Got the slippers on, got some nice jeans, got the A-Tank, you know what I'm saying? But, but you know, Zach has changed. He got the beard now because Fatima likes the beard. She asked specifically for the beard, so I make sure I do that. Got the wave setting in, you know what I'm saying? It's all natural. Berries and juices, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know the Zach part. This was, see, this was not here season one. I think the Zach part came in season five. I think it's all the season five. First episode is the team is when y'all really seen the part. So the look has evolved as so has Zach. I was just coming to your room. Sp speak about evolution. Don't you run, don't you run from me. Don't you run from me. Yeah, I remember my best friend. She's still my best friend all these years. Zach and Danny, yo. We was the comedy duo people didn't even know they needed. With my underwear, Danny. I don't know. Do you need a ride to work? How the hell am I going to go to work naked? You sure? Or do you? I'm positive. OK, because that bike riding down the highway is going to look real dumb. Especially if I'm naked with my underwear. And season eight, Danny is going to really truck her personal growth, right? She's really thugging it out. She's really trying to stay on her personal growth journey and not give up. It gets hard, she's gonna have some setbacks, but she's gonna keep trucking. In season eight, my character is finally um, finding his footing back at the bank. And it's kind of given like vintage vibes. Like, you, you know, like when we first met Maurice, he was in the bank and the bank is where we saw him a lot. He's in the bank a lot. And we get to see a lot of um, different situations happen at the bank. And it's very, very, very funny. And he is very determined to stake his claim at the bank with whoever is there, whoever tries to come in, whoever was there when he was gone. He is really adamant about making sure that people know what time it is, for sure. Who is this with this deep voice? Oh, is this the dude at the bank? This dude has a name. It's Maurice. But on Saturday night, his extravaganza. Yo, look at this picture. Um, I brought you here because I want to share something special with you. As a young man at drama school, I went to the Chish School of the Arts. It's a very celebrated and decorated conservatory in New York City. One would only dream of having a squat picture. I, I, how embarrassing, but here I am in the Tyler Perry Hall of Fame. This is from season one. I can't breathe now, bro. Oh my gosh. Let's go. What the hell? That's the answer. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know, when we came in season six, episode 12, I started off as, to the audience knowledge, as a guy who works with Danny at the airport. Then by like season, season six, episode 18, 19, we find out I'm actually one of the VPs 
of the company. And then through the time jump that we had in season seven, the airlines end up merging together. And now I go from being, you know, a guy at the airport that's interested in Danny to now also being her boss because of the merger. So that creates a little bit of workplace dynamics that may not necessarily be wholesome. So we had to kind of move and navigate that space as well too. And then, you know, we came in as a boy band, you know, three guys dating the girls. And then, you know, through Jordan's fallout with Andy, that's created dynamics where, you know, you may not see us all on triple dates again, like the time we, you know, rolled through Atlanta on the bus and had that great date. And so now it's like, we have to settle into our own identity. It's not about group dating, but it's about us kind of becoming our own thing. So I think season seven, we tackle some of the workplace dynamics. Now season eight, it's about how do we create and build intimacy. Come on, I want to introduce y'all, show y'all one of my favorite people on the show. Yes? It's your boy. <laughs> what's up, B? Who did you bring to my door? Oh. Y'all say what's up? Y'all want to say what's up? Come on in. Thank you. Welcome to the Sabrina Abode. Welcome, welcome. I got my little carrot juice because baby, we want to stay fresh, okay, and sexy. Make yourself comfortable. Go ahead. I'm going to make myself comfortable. This is my room. Eight times in a row I've been in here, okay? This is where I study my lines. Don't look, don't look. This is my workload for the day. Yes, we shoot every single episode, 22 of them, in two weeks' time. 10 days. This time, nine days. I don't even know how we did it. I just told Tony to leave before I got here. Why'd you tell him to do that? He called me and he said that we need to talk. That's why he was in the bathroom. Thought the typhoon gave him diarrhea. He was old. Mm -hmm. What can the audience expect from Sabrina for season eight? There's definitely some elements that you have not seen of her that she gets to play in. There's a lot of levels in this new season. There are challenges this season that are out of the character's control. And we get to see the relationship between Rich and Sabrina develop into something that is life-changing. Hey, this next guy, that's for the ladies. Hold on, hold on. Yo. What's poppin'? Yo, you got a camera. You got a warning when I got a camera. I'd have did my hair a little better than this. But what up, y'all? What up, what up? He definitely looks good. He's just playing. Appreciate it, appreciate it. What's up, y'all? Cheeto Wakocha. Gary Wachito. <clears throat> Who told you to go snooping on information about me? Penelope. You need to be careful about what you go looking for. I'm not the man to be messing with. Everyone's been following Gary's journey since season one, where we just think he's a guy who's in a relationship that's not working out for him, and he's yearning for Andy. And we're kind of in between about how we feel about him. Is he, you know, telling the full truth about his life and what he has going on? And um, is he someone that you can trust? When I first came on in season two, Hayden was kind of nice. You know, I was helping out Andy, I was helping out Fatima, I was helping out Gary. You know, uh, seemed like a nice guy to me, but um, as the seasons have progressed, I think he's shown his true colors, and uh, your boy be wildin'. And I really love playing this character because a lot of the other characters I've played are real nice, happy-go-lucky kind of nice dudes, and <laughs> Hayden is uh, the opposite of that. Uh, I don't think anybody that meets Hayden likes Hayden. And, really, really fun being able to play a part like that. Thank you. Anytime I can put egg on Hayden's face, it's cause for a celebration. Cheers to that. I've had a couple moments on the show that uh, have been memorable for me. Uh, a lot of them include Fatima, usually get my ass beat. Uh, <laughs> the first time she had uh, her boys roll up on me, I believe they were uh, Madam's goons. They ran up on me in the parking garage. I got beat down. I took some real injuries in that. She walked off like a super villain, left me over there getting beat up. So I thought I was done getting beat up after that. Then like the next season, I show up at the law firm, Zach comes in there, throwing me downstairs, beat my ass again. 
I'm just, I, I get beat up every other season. I stay with bruises and crutches, but I do understand it because Hayden is uh, low-key evil. So uh, I probably want to beat his ass too. Armani! What's up, girl? How are you feeling? I got you yeah. the water that you asked for because you're a superstar deep. And he got me Fuji because I don't drink Fuji's, okay? Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm joking, but no, I, I'm with BC. Yes. And I want you guys to meet our amazing director. Over here, come on! You're like, yeah, where we go? Ah. Honey, it's giving rich auntie, period. Make sure you it's giving rich wife. <laughs> it's giving rich wife. Rich. Okay. <laughs>